had a, a quality and he had a control that, that really was un, unparalleled, really. The superstars and world stars, that sort of thing, but, um, you know, right from the start, people like, knew that George had got something a bit special about him. when his genius came through thanks to uh, television uh, he became the idol uh, of Northern Ireland uh, he could walk in water and George Best is idolised still by many people in Northern Ireland and this kid came up and put the ball past me and I didn't know what had happened and I thought you've slipped a bit and he did it again. I didn't know at the time, but he's thinking, you know, this cheeky little kid, you know, I'll get him next time. Anyway, it happened two or three times. And he did it the third time, and I said, son, you do that again, and I'll break your neck. If I hadn't been Irish, I think he'd have probably buried me then and there. And he, he, he talked about it in later years, and it was, I mean, to me, it was a, a great compliment. Actually, running onto the field before the game, uh, I mean, a tunnel, at United on a, on a high level, you know, you, you don't actually see the crowd until you're about halfway through it, or you see the start of the crowd. So it's like turning the volume up on a, on a radio, where it just got louder and louder. I mean, that feeling will stay with me for the rest of my life. I mean, the hairs on the back of my head still. But once I actually got out there and started knocking the ball around, it was, it was just another game. I, I did exactly the same things in the first team as I'd been doing with the junior team. on a sixpence. He could, uh, he had a, an unbelievable vision. He could tell everything that was happening around. He knew exactly where people were. And, uh, and it, that, that gave him all the time that he needed to actually express himself.